Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am the Sam, the beans bouncing around in the background and he got some crazy pants energy out of somewhere. Just a heads up, he is a little bit more um, engaged, we'll say in today's video than normal. And I just wanted to be upfront with that. So if you hear strange noises in the background, that's what's going on. Everyone's safe and healthy. He's just a little extra peppy. The other day, my husband asked if I thought I would ever run out of content and I said, no, absolutely not. And today's style is an excellent example as to why. This is the Prairie Craftsman. And if you were here for the Bungalow Craftsman, I talked a little bit there about how the Craftsman is like an architectural style, whereas Bungalow tends to be more of an adjective. Are there bungalows that are just straight bungalow and are there prairies that are just straight prairies? Yes. But for the most part, you're going to see these styles sort of marry into other architectural families. Today specifically, we're talking about the merging of the prairie style and the craftsman style, but you can also find prairie-influenced mid-century homes, prairie-influenced ranch, and even prairie Mediterranean, which is kind of like a weird concept in my brain when I think about it, but then if you look at some of the houses, they're, they're pretty cool. So I don't think I really run the risk of running out of content when there are so many home styles and so many like home style adjectives that can just all marry, not to mention whole families get married and make house babies. Like we have Victorian and farmhouse and Victorian farmhouse, and we have mid-century and craftsman and mid-century craftsman. So I don't anticipate running out of content anytime soon. And if you guys know anyone who could make me a D20 with like home styles on the side so I could sort of roll and make house family trees of my own, that would be super cool. Let me know in the comments. I understand the dice would be huge, but I don't even care. I just think that sounds awesome. So what actually makes a prairie a prairie? You're going to see a large emphasis on horizontal lines, low walls, flat or very close to flat roofs, a lot of main level decks, local materials, and just just a touch of modernism as these were coming into style. Well, the prairie originated back in like the 1800s, but the prairie craftsman hybrid that we're going to be looking at today was coming into style a bit more closer to when the more modern movement started. But a lot of that really overlaps really, really well with the craftsman style, which also has an emphasis on overall slightly lower shaped builds, lower pitched roofs, open floor plans, um, natural materials, local materials, trying to sort of blend into the local landscape as opposed to the also popular at the time Victorian style, which for the most part was much more look at me, I'm cool and I have bright colors, right? So that's why these two styles really married so well together. And now you see prairie craftsmen all across the US, although it is mostly in the more Midwest and Plains states. Plains states, not Plains states. Well, anyway. Now in general, prairies are about one story, craftsmen are about two. So when you bring the two together, you're going to end up with a one to two story. Very rarely will you get away with anything much larger than that, because again, the prairie is focused on more of a low stature home. So today we are building a two story. Um, it looks pretty small from this angle, but it's actually a whole five bedrooms and three bathrooms, which is pretty great. Plus a very open kitchen, living and dining space that has more than enough room for all of those Sims. So fire up your games and let's get started. I'm starting on a 20 by 30 in Newcrest today. As far as best world for this build, anything that resembles the American Midwest or Plains would be great. As far as I know, there aren't actually any worlds like that, um, but if there are any, I don't own them. Also, you'll see that I have 68,000 down here. That's just because technically someone lives here because I used this for a different build before. It uh, has nothing to do with the budget for the build today or anything. We're going to start off with a 7x7 seven seven square right over here. This is going to be our entry, kitchen, and dining area except we'll add a little four by one bump out right here and you can hold control to remove walls. Starting two out, we're going to go over five and up six, add a bathroom here and here. This will be the main bedroom and main bath and this will be the downstairs sort of guest bathroom. Starting here, we're going to go down seven and over five this will end up being our living room. If you're going for a craftsman or a prairie style, both tend to have fairly open floor plans, and we're going to open this up with a craftsman style arch later, like we did in the craftsman bungalow video, which if you haven't watched already, I highly recommend checking out. Up front here, we're just going to do fairly small, but relatively deep front deck, and we can add a deck off the back as well. With the shape I decided to go with, wrapping around isn't as practical, but it's definitely an option if you want to do that. Also decks can be covered or not. And as far as foundations go, it's going to be somewhere between on the ground and about three, maybe four um, levels up. This tends to be quite low to the ground. 
For this build, once again, I'm going to use base game and seasons because seasons has so much great craftsman stuff. As always, you can get the base style of the home down with the base game just fine, and you can still follow along and do all of the other stuff. But if you find yourself really loving the craftsman style, I highly recommend picking up the um, seasons pack. You can probably hear him in the background, the little man is just singing pretty much 24 7 so hopefully you can hear me above all of that um upstairs i'm going to be drawing a lot of this stuff freehand just because it's going to be easier so what we're going to do is to sort of use the stairs as a central space we're going to do a small fat l right here this is going to be a bathroom starting here we're going to go east one south one east three north one east one then we're going to go up four, up three, down, over, and back to finish up the room. This will be a little bedroom here as well. And then here we're going to continue this wall out and make a four by four bedroom with one corner cut out. This will be a four by three bedroom with one corner cut out. We're going to finish off this space with a squiggly wall just like that. This could easily be a library space or additional living space. And then I would probably classify this as four bedrooms and a bathroom, uh, but you could always expand this living space into one or two of these bedrooms, um, change one of these into an office or an activity room. Obviously, whatever your sims need, you can do. But once again, like with a lot of these craftsmen's, very family-centered, and they were built sort of in a, not argument against necessarily the Victorian style, but they definitely made a statement about the simplicity of living of the standard American family of the middle class. The roof is going to be primarily hipped roofs with a few half-hipped roofs and a couple of half-gabled roofs to sort of close in some gaps. I'm going to start over on this side and cover this area, which is pretty close to a square. Prairie roofs tend to be flat or nearly flat, and to keep us um, from struggling with roof clipping, I would recommend raising it one or two sort of levels up from the absolute lowest it can go, and then you're going to want to pull your eaves out too. However, I'm going to leave them pulled in just because that's going to make it a lot easier for me to actually show you where we're roofing, and then I'll go through and pull out the eaves. So, we're going to copy this same piece and place it covering the rest of our roof pieces, making sure that we always have a good sort of seam lining up right there. And we want to make sure we don't have any of these little valleys, so we'll be extending our roof pieces all the way in. Now that this piece is completely covered, we can go through and pull these eaves out. Because the pitch is all the same, your eaves should line up all the way around your build, and if they don't line up, either your pitch is wrong or you didn't pull the eaves out far enough. Before we roof here, we're actually going to add what has been called in some of the articles I read a floating deck. Um, we're going to grab the very short half wall and actually draw a little deck, just like this. When we roof the front deck here, this porch is going to look as if it is floating, which I guess is a thing that sort of became more popular with the Prairie Craftsman. It's not necessary, uh, but it's cool, so why not, right? We're going to grab a half-hipped roof and we're going to start here. Basically what we're going to roof this um, like is going to be a wraparound deck and I'm going to bring this up one just so it's sort of matching up with that level right there. If I pull this all the way to the one side and then grab my half gable, bring this down to one tile, get rid of this top eave by holding shift and then match the pitch and of course make sure that all of my eaves are pulled out too. You can see that this lines up. And the reason that I'm adding this half gable here instead of just pulling this back is because that's just not um, helpful. We're going to repeat this process on the other side of the roof as well. Grab the same half gable and just copy it. This one will be two tiles deep, which still matches up just fine, although I will have to remove that eave. There we go. And then I'm going to copy this half hipped roof piece to place on this little bump out, and then copy this same one tile half gable to sort of close up that gap. Off the back here, we're going to use that very same half hip roof from over here. And we can either just roof this portion or we can pull that same roof piece out to cover the deck as well. That was a lot of roof pieces very fast, so while I change the shingle color, we'll just recap. Uh, shingles really doesn't matter too much, I'm just probably going to go with these. So on top we have just hipped roofs. We have four of them. From left to right we have a half hipped piece of roof, a half gable to close up that gap, a half gable here, a half hipped taking care of the front of the build, and another half gable. I will be going for more of an updated style with mine if you want to make it feel a little bit more 
um, old and like more like one of the original constructions. So you'd probably want to go with a beveled out roof trim or angled out. I'm going to be using a square roof trim and I'm going to be trimming out everything in black today. One of the reasons I didn't go with black shingles because that would just be too um, dark and heavy on top I think for such a sort of low design like there's not enough vertical lines breaking stuff up. Typically I advise you to stay away from these very strong horizontal lines because it's going to make your build feel very segmented. However, if it's a staple of the build style, like with the prairie, uh, then go for it. As far as siding goes, just like with anything craftsman related or prairie related for that matter, you're going to want to stick with lots of natural tones and looking um, materials. Siding is great, stone, brick is also an excellent option. Just stay away from a lot of horizontal lines like this, and if you choose to use a long brick, you're going to want to go with something horizontal. Um, same with siding, probably wouldn't use this one, although that may be acceptable in other craftsmen's. Again, the strong sort of horizontal lines is part of the main sort of personality of the prairie style. I'm just going to go with some grey siding, I think. Although if you wanted to give your build a little more interest, this would be a great opportunity to sort of mix and match some tones. I'll be using the black stone later on, so I could use this to actually accent some of the other parts of my build, such as this sort of little bump out right here. This area right here, I don't recommend doing anything that would result in a corner like this where you have one texture and then another unless you're going to put a column there, which lo and behold is actually my plan. And I think I'll put some stone back here as well. Adding textures like this can almost create false vertical lines, which is just going to help break up the path of the eye and provide a little bit more architectural interest. And now let's talk columns and windows. As previously mentioned, I'm going to be going with a lot of the seasons stuff today. It matches both the prairie and the craftsman aesthetic very, very well. So first I'm going to sort of frame out my deck, and then I'm also going to add a column here and here. I don't want this whole space to just be open, I'd rather have more columns. And this sort of helps um, add a little bit of visual symmetry and frame out the doorway as well as some windows that will add uh, over here. We're going with the craftsman railing, although anything that has sort of that same frame-like feel, um, possibly just some simple railing like this, or this one would work well, and some stairs. And you can see how this column over here sort of adds a um, divider between the stone and the siding. Uh, which makes it look like a much more finished and intentional corner. On the first floor we're going to add a nice big front door with some lovely windows. I'll be sticking with my craftsman door of course here and off the back I think I will grab a sliding door. Clusters of windows like this uh, one window that appears to be three are not uncommon and you'll often see clusters of windows spaced out every few tiles. Well feet in the real world uh, but tiles for sims world. And then we can add bigger windows in our living spaces. I'll add this big window here where I want my dining room, but I'll add a smaller window in the kitchen area because counters. If you want your windows to place more exactly, go ahead and hit F5. That's going to turn on or off quarter tile placement. And then same sort of idea goes for upstairs. I'm going to add a little glass door here to get out onto this balcony and then grab the same windows I was using downstairs to place in some of the bedrooms upstairs. Symmetry is not terribly important, but it's also not a terrible idea. This is a bathroom and it's right next to a porch, so for privacy reasons, we're going to add a small window there. That should about do that, and by now it should be looking pretty familiar. If you live anywhere in the Midwest or in the Prairie States, you'll probably see a lot of homes in styles very similar to this in your suburbs um, and even out in the more rural areas. Inside, I'm going to be using this craftsman door, but anything that has some paneling on it. You see this one sort of has two large uh, vertical panels and one smaller one at the top, which is pretty well mimicked in this door, or even this one will work just fine. And I'm going to match the wood tones. I decided to add these little cutouts here so that I could have sort of a very small hallway and leave this wall open for a desk or bookshelves or anything else we may want to put upstairs. Bedroom here and bedroom here. If you wanted to open up any of these spaces, then I would recommend doing it like this. Add a couple of columns, a spandrel, and then grab half wall, this one, 1.0, and add a little bit of wall right there. You'll see this in a lot of craftsman homes, and if I could, I would actually convert this little area into shelves because that's quite common. So the kitchen and dining room will be completely open, and this really could be as well, but this just adds a little bit more architectural detail and charm. Family bathroom can just open right there, as well as this bedroom, and then that bathroom. That should be all the doors. I forgot to add windows to this wall, which feels kind of silly. 
There we go, that's a little better. Okay. And speaking of kitchen, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a layout over here. What I'm seeing visually is going to be an L or possibly a U with a little peninsula here. And wouldn't you know it, that fits pretty well. My windows are clipping into my counters just a touch, but I don't really want them much higher, so I'm going to ignore that. Um, another way that you could sort of work around this is if you wanted to use the island living cabinets, um, which are admittedly a little more modern than Craftsman, or the snowy escape cabinets, as they don't actually have that little lip at the top and that would blend in a little better, but we are sticking with base game and seasons today. Now over here, I just started straight up against the wall with island pieces because if I tried to start with a counter piece, especially if I didn't have move objects turned on, which I don't, then I'm going to have that weird little lip there. Even if I were to add this island on the next side, we don't get that lip to carry through. So your options are either to turn on move objects and then essentially overlap them like this, the corner sort of has the same thing, so you'd have to add like a half wall or something there. And I just find it a lot easier to put the stove here and then have the island coming directly out of the wall. As long as we're here, let's talk scaling. And when I say let's talk scaling, I just mean how easy is this to make larger or smaller or to maneuver and move around. Craftsmen tend to be built very much off of rectangles. This room is not quite a rectangle, but it's really, really close. And it'd be very easy to just expand this room and voila, you have a larger kitchen and a larger dining room. You could expand or add on extra living spaces fairly easily. Moving these bathrooms around and creating a hall for more living spaces or bathrooms on the first floor would also be quite simple. Because I'm personally building in a little bit more of a modern direction, I'm going to go ahead and make my floors inside quite dark to match the rest of my woodwork. You could use wood for the porch, although it's also common to use stone. And I just realized I forgot to add a foundation, so I'm going to do that now. I'll be using the Seasons one that matches everything else that I've added, but any stone or brick will work just great. Older style craftsmen tend to have more paneling on the walls, although if you want to keep it looking updated, just plain old paint or something with a trim on just the bottom will work just fine. But you're still going to want to stick with more muted and earthy tones. Then again, it is The Sims 4 and you can do whatever the heck you want. I feel like I'm doing this out of order compared to what I usually do. Also, if you can't hear, I am a little distracted with an extra energetic small child. Something else that can be nice to do is actually match your counter um, in your bathroom to your kitchen. If you add the little guy, it's literally hit his head like 10 times today, just running into stuff. And I don't usually involve him this much in the videos, but he keeps blowing me away. So I feel like you guys deserve to know why my voice keeps changing or I may end up distracted or not quite finish a sentence. Anyway, if you start with like the full tile counter here and then add an end piece, you can end up with a really nice little vanity area and you have some extra space for decorations. Using the counters can also be really helpful for making more sort of like his and hers or expanded vanities. This video is a hot mess, but I simply do not have time to re-record. So you could end up with a really nice, more spacious bathroom just like this. This bathroom can easily fit a whole bath shower combo if you arrange it like this. And of course, there's room for a laundry basket for all you crazy people. Before we finish up with landscaping here, if you haven't already, I highly recommend subscribing. I know today's video has been a little bit all over the place and I'm simply going to blame that on a high energy child. And you know what? Some days are just like that. And that's why my channel name is Sam and Bean, because I am the Sam, he is the Bean, and there's really no separating us in any stream of reality. Not all the videos are like this though, so if this isn't your speed, I have tons of videos where he's much more toned down. Um, in fact, usually when I record, he's much more toned down. And if there are any styles that you in particular would like to see broken down and addressed like this, you can let me know in the comments below. If it's not already on my schedule, I'll make sure I get it on there, or I will cover it in January, um, which is when I'm hoping to continue this series after a break for the holidays. If you remember from our previous Craftsman video, landscaping tends to be fairly simple, organic, um, and uses a lot of the local plants. Shrubs up close to the house is great. And if these are just a little bit too big for you, you can scale them down by using the bracket keys. I highly recommend landscaping with move objects on if you can. Hit Control shift c type in bb.moveobjects, ob and you should get that little confirmation code that move objects cheat is on. Most of the landscaping is sort of going to be tied directly to the house with a little bit lining a path. The rest of the yard will be open for lawn or family activities. If you're going to use terrain paint for a path, I highly recommend painting it out in dirt first, and then going through and adding your pavers. <laughs> What this is going to do is sort of create a nice soft edge on your paths, blending it directly into the terrain, as opposed to just having stones sitting on top of grass. Also, if you have a particular shape of landscaping that you're hoping to go for, it can be really helpful to paint it in first. Like I know I want some plants lining this side of the path, so I'm just going to paint in dirt where I want my plants. 
Oh, a little bit of a flower bed up front here as well. Because stones are used in this build, it makes total sense to add some stones to the landscaping as well, and I'm going to use these to sort of act as a little border to the side of my flower bed. I'm going to place a couple of more decorative boulders as well, although this landscape is not huge, so it's not going to take too many. As far as plants in the world, what do we have? Looks like these are the dull daisies in the pink swatch, which doesn't match my build very much, but that's okay. And I'm just going to make a nice little row of these down the side here, holding alt to get more exact placement. And this one appears to be the sun rose bush, which is more yellow than orange for what I have, but it's the closest thing I can find. So I'll use a couple of those up front here as well. Because these dull daisies and the sun roses are so close in size, resizing them a little bit can add a bit more variety in height and dimension to your landscaping, so I recommend doing that. I have a little bit of a gap right here, and I'm going to add some of this knotgrass grass and fill in some of the rest of the space with these low-lying pale yellow flowers. This looks like a good place for a mailbox. And let's do a little recap here. From the outside, you'll notice that the Prairie Craftsman has a lot of very strong horizontal lines. The short wall height and natural tones and materials almost help this build look as if it's melting into the background. Now, this isn't a great example of that, but again, I don't have a world where I can um, really build this uh, in the environment that it was originally created for, so we're just going to pretend. Landscaping will be fairly minimal using a lot of local plants and organic shapes. The house will be sided in local materials with a very low-pitched, generally hipped roof. Inside you'll have a fairly open floor plan when it comes to your living area. And this sort of floating porch in the roof of the front deck is not necessarily unique to prairie style craftsman homes, but it was definitely popularized by this style. You'll have assorted large decks, covered or uncovered, all around the base of the build, and it's very, very rare for this build to be more than two stories. I believe that is all I have for you guys today. If you haven't already, I recommend checking out some of the other videos in this series. We have already done one craftsman, the bungalow, and we just recently did the Italianate Victorian, which I know what you're thinking. Isn't that like the opposite of craftsman? Not really. Um, it is one of the most simple Victorians out there, and it also tends to have a lot of flat roofs um, and a very boxy core structure. So I recommend checking that one out if you liked this one but want something a little bit fancier. The bottom card is something that YouTube thinks you'll like, and they're usually right, so it feels like a pretty safe bet. As always, don't forget to leave your questions, corrections, and suggestions in the comments down below. I had so much fun building with you guys today, and of course the bonus energy from Little Man. And I hope to build with you again tomorrow. Bye!